shaking your head, but y'all done a good job. chapter 15. We'll go ahead and be heading over there in your scripture. I want to talk to you tonight about the unplanned church at Philippi. Um, a little bit of a, a, a strange way that I come to, to get into this uh, to this lesson. I want to uh, well and, and I promise I didn't plan this. Maybe God did. I don't know. But um, it, it kind of fits in in my lesson tonight, I, I've been thinking in my head, you know what, I'd like to do a study, I might do a series on, on, on 1 Peter, because I've never done a, a Peter study before. But as I was trying to study in Peter, it just wouldn't come together. And, you know, through circumstance, I ended up in, in Philippians a couple of times, and I think we're going to go through Philippians, and so we're going to start tonight with the, uh, the beginning of the Philippian church. And, uh, you know, so that's just the way it kind of, Kind of worked out, so we'll be looking at that tonight, and probably leading into uh, maybe some Sundays and Wednesdays in, in Philippians, uh, chasing joy here before long. So um, I have this theme. I've, I've said it before. See if you remember this. It's good to have a plan. It's wise to know that God can change that plan at any point, right? That's it. It's something that, that I've seen happen so many times in my life, and I'm sure that you have too. So. Um, so let's get into this. Remember, bear that in mind as we uh, as we look into these verses. We'll just start in, in Acts chapter 15 and verse 36, all the way to the, uh, the end of the chapter. Not quite all the way to the end of the chapter, but, uh, but towards the end. Acts chapter 15 and verse 36 uh, says this, and we're looking for the, uh, the original plan of this trip that they're going on. It says that, and some days after, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. All right, so what was the original planned agenda for the upcoming mission trip that Paul and, and his was going to take Barnabas on? Yeah. So they're going to check on the churches in cities where they've already been to. That's the, the original plan. This, this trip, we're going to go back to the churches, uh, preach there, build them up, see how things are going. So, so from the start, Paul did not intend for this to be a trip in which new churches would be started. It wasn't the intention. Um, you know, that being said, I'm sure Paul was open-minded and always looking for that opportunity to do that, an opportunity to share the gospel as as always, because we know what kind of man that, that Paul was. Um, it's a good thing that he kept an open mind if he did, because uh, God is going to totally change the personnel and the direction and the objective of this whole trip that they're about to go on. All right. So 
thinking along those lines, you know, when we plan to do things and we come up with ideas and stuff, who can, who can honestly say, I really just love it when what I plan to do doesn't work out? <laughs> Almost nobody would ever say that initially, uh, but, you know, because most people, we, we, we hate change or, or we dislike it. Let's use that word. We dislike change. We don't want to change direction. We've got an idea of where we're going, what we want to do. So change is, is uncomfortable. Isn't it? Um, but when the change, when the plan is changed by God, how often does it work out for the better? 100%, right? It always comes out better. Now, does it always seem better on the surface right at first? No, sometimes it can be quite uncomfortable. Uh, I mean, I was just thinking of a, an off the top of my head example, you know, just say I, I plan to start a business and I was going to make a lot of money. I never had that plan myself. All right, but I, I, this is my plan. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to make loads and loads of money. But through no fault of my own, I ended up losing everything. You know, if something like that happens, it's hard to see the good in that, right? Now, it just seems like it's all bad, but... Any, even in things like that, for the child of God, there is good in it somewhere. It will eventually work out to that good. It's a, it's a promise from God. Now, could we not agree that sometimes, even in things like planned ministries, and remember, everything, those spiritual gifts we've been talking about, really, have been popping up over and over. Ministry, one of the you know, a, a planned ministry. And everybody can have a ministry. If you plan to do something for God, affecting other people, it's a ministry. All right. So even in things like a planned ministry that doesn't work out according to, to our plan, it could be because of some misdoing on our part. You know, we have to think about that. Sure, we have to be aware of that. Certainly, we don't want that sort of thing to happen, you know, but, uh, you know, thank God that he foreknows our shortcomings. He already has a plan to deal with them, but, you know, that is a fact that sometimes we mess up the plan, all right? So, before we get, uh, just just file that. That was, that was a footnote of, of sorts, I guess. I need to back up just a minute before we talk about how God changes the plan. And we need to consider where do the plans that we have come from? You know, we're going to make sure that our plan is coming from the right place. And really, I think we can apply this across the uh, the broad spectrum of whatever we plan to do. All right? I, I want to say it this way. See if you agree or disagree with this. Everything that we plan to do, I mean everything from I'm going to go fishing this weekend to I'm going to start a ministry, I'm going to found a new church, whatever it might be, any, any cross the realm of things to do should pass this qualification test. That there is no obvious reason that God would be displeased with this. You know, that, that should be our first thing before anything that happens. And I think that's a, there's a disconnect sometimes in different areas of our life with that. You know, if I follow this plan, initial thought, is there any reason why God would be displeased with me for doing this? All right. Um, you know, for instance, uh, if it's if the plan that we have is sinful, then that's a no, obviously, right? I mean, that's a that's a that's a hard no. If it's contrary to His Word, which you know that would be a sin, that's a no. We need our part. We shut that plan down right there. If it's done out of any impure motivation, you know, like maybe revenge or something like that, you know then that sort of plan should cease before it ever even starts, all right? So let me ask you this. I'm not, I'm not looking for right or wrong answers here. Uh, just do you, do you think that every plan that passes those criteria, uh, especially in, in connection to things like utilizing spiritual gifts from God, um, do you think those things come from God. In other words, is it all God's idea? How much input do you think you have in the plans that, that you make? It's just something to think about, right? I, I like to I like to answer it this way. Foremost, if it works, or if it turns out uh, to good, you know, then it was from God. <laughs> all right. I know, but man, you know, that was straight come from God. But I think sometimes 
He lets me think that I come up with ideas. <laughs> and let me see, uh, for instance, sermon topics, things to pre, you know, and you can apply this to wherever it applies in your life. This is where it jumps to the forefront of my mind. Um, you know, sometimes I know that the Holy Spirit puts, uh, you know, uh, a sermon topic or subject on my heart to, to preach about on a Sunday morning or teach about on a Wednesday night. Sometimes I'm sure, without a doubt. Sometimes I'm not sure what to preach about. You know, sometimes it gets late in the week and I don't know what to preach about. And of course, I'm praying about it harder as the week goes on, you know. Um, and, but many times what I'll do is just pick something that I want to talk about start studying it and kind of preaching it to myself and see if God blesses it or if he, you know, switches that off. Usually I have a pretty good feeling of yes or no pretty quick into that process. You know, and to me, that seems like a good idea for everything. And what you've been saying, Brother Lee, on those, uh, those, those spiritual gifts, we, uh, you know, we pick something and, and you know what you what your spiritual gift is and, and start doing it <laughs> you know you pick something and get busy do something uh, i realize some people just cannot operate like that though you know some people just can't you know I got, i've got to have the clear word from you know personally i'd rather be doing something and then adjust the plan as god sees fit now sometimes that gets me in trouble but I'd like to be moving forward and doing something and rather than waiting around. What you got, brother? I was on the job a lot of times, so I did something, made me it wrong. Yeah, I've heard that before, too. Yeah, don't just stand there, do something. You know, a lot of us have that personality where, where we just, you know, kind of got to be working in that way. And, you know, like everything, it's middle ground. You know, you got to find that middle ground. So let's get back to Paul, though. I don't know for sure the origin of this plan that he had, you know, it sounds to me the way that it's written. In, in my mind, it sounds like exactly when I get tired of sitting and come up with a plan, you know, not that it was right or wrong plan or good or bad plan, just, you know, I, I think we're gonna go here and do this, you know. It makes me wonder if Paul could have avoided, you know, the headache and some of the hard feelings that were about to happen if you would have waited a little bit and went a little slower and waited on God, honestly, I don't know. Though. How can how can you say uh, something like that? I hate to accuse the Apostle Paul of doing something human, but you know he was human, so he, he may have. Uh, maybe that's what it was. <coughs> but we also know this. This is where where my thought process goes. Often God will lead or let us lead ourselves, and you know whichever way we'll look at it, He'll lead us right into something that end up uh, hurting, it hurts, because he has a reason that we don't see, and that's what it's gonna take to get us to make the necessary adjustments to the plan uh, that we would not have made otherwise. That makes sense? You know, sometimes uh, you, you, we walk right into pain, and that's what changes the plan, and that puts us where God wants us to be. A lot of great ministries have come out of, 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 out of a headache, Right, uh, and you know, the reason is so that the plan will go the way that God wants the plan to go, not the way that we plan for the way to go. All right, and it would be easier, I think, if God would always just speak into our hearts the way that He needs us to change the plan. But I think He knows that sometimes if He just tries to tell us, we're still going to do it our way, don't we? You know, and maybe that's more likely the case that why. He changes the plan that he way that he does sometimes. So let's look at what happened in our scriptures. The first change in the plan, uh, chapter 15, 36 through 40. Some days after, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go again, visit our brothers in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought, not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches. All right. So there was a change in who would be accompanying Paul on the journey, right? Why? Well, on the surface, what we see 
it is because of the conflict between he and Barnabas. Um, uh, but we see how how well this worked out in the end. You know, two missionaries teams went out instead of one. Um, you know, John Mark matured later, reappeared as Paul's trusted fellow laborer, um, and uh, as well as the success of the missionary journey that, that Paul's fixing to leave on, that we'll be looking here in just a minute at. Um, and, and when we look at all those results, it becomes obvious that God changed the plan, right? It was God's plan all along. He's the one that orchestrated this. Yeah, yeah, human. Okay. Human reason there. Which one of those two men was on? Paul or Barnabas? Maybe a little both. <laughs> Yep. Quick side lesson here that kind of uh, that kind of goes to that thought, brother Bud. Is uh, uh, there's another thing that may have been fixed here, or at least the process started. But how many times? How many times does an argument just explode all of a sudden on the surface, as opposed to how many times does an argument been brewing for a long time before it finally comes out? You know, I have a feeling, and it doesn't say this much, but I have a feeling that Paul and Barnabas probably needed to have this conversation for quite some time and needed to get that out. Now, I feel that way because I tend to be a conflict avoider myself, you know, and I read into these things. Um, you know, and, and that can lead to that situation where, where things, hard feelings just keep growing and growing and growing until one day it's <laughs> spill out all over the place in, in a great big contention. willing to show that he was wrong. Yeah. When he said that dream all through and he Yeah, later on, right? Yep. Isn't it a shame that sometimes it takes years for us to look back and say, uh, you know what? Maybe I was a little wrong there. Uh, well, but, but but the Lord did not let that affect yeah. the accomplishment of the ministry. If anything, he made it better because obviously Paul and Silas made a good team and Barnabas and his guys were going and doing what they were doing. You know, so, uh, you know, our Lord takes our uh, our humanity and makes it into what he wants to do with it, right? Um, and Mark had grown yeah. at that time. Sure. Um, you know, on that thought that I was having, some, some people avoid uh, what needs to be addressed while some people, on the other hand, address things that probably should just be left alone. So as always, we've got to hit that middle ground. Um, good news, after all the contention blew over, uh, it appears that everybody put all that stuff behind them in Christ-like maturity and, and got on with the job. Yeah, so it all worked out. So next change, still in personnel. Let's look at 14 verse not 14 we're going to 14 chapter 16 oh I know what I was trying to say verse 41 in, in that chapter and, uh, and then we'll go in through verse 3 in chapter 16 so Paul went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches and then he came to Derbe and Lystra and behold a certain disciple was there named Timotheus we know him as Timothy the son of a certain woman who was a Jewish and believed, but his father was Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they all knew that his father was Greek. All right, so it looks like, or just uh, changing the personnel here a little bit, it looks like if Paul did not know about Timothy before he arrived. All right? So he gets here and he discovers Timothy. So the church at Lystra was uh, started during Paul's first journey. This is one of the churches he's going to go and check on along the way. Now, Timothy being a convert from it, taught by his mother and his grandmother. We know that from other places in the scripture. All right? But what I like here is that Paul had the wherewithal to pick up Timothy and add him to the team. Now, of course, I think we should assume that God led him to do that. The Lord directed Paul in doing that, you know, but 
But again, it was a change of plans, and, and we already know that Paul's a little sensitive about who he's taking with him on his journey, right? And so here he's willing to pick up this, this another young guy. You know, Timothy was young. So was Mark when Mark walked out on the first journey, which is probably why Paul didn't trust him. So now here's another young, eager prospect. You know, that Paul's able to put aside that and follow the Lord's direction to take him on. Um, I think the uh, the lesson for us in that is to look for people to join our plan. And you know, how often does God give us something to do that's uh, that's completely solo? And this is this is my ministry, and I'm going to do it. And I don't need any help. Nobody's coming along with me. This is, you know, there are things like that. But most of the time, what we're doing is 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 uh, you know, the Lord lays on our heart to get something started. And if it's if it's successful and God blesses it and it takes off, then more people come on. And it grows and grows and grows into something bigger, all right? You know, in our case, you know, that might be a younger Christian that we can mentor and take them on in something like that. Or somebody else who the Lord gave the vision to, to come alongside and jump on board with, with your mission. So what happens if we reject that? If we say, I'm going to do this all on my own, you know, we shortchange ourselves of the benefit of the help. We shortchange them of the experience that, that the Lord had planned for them. You know, so we um, can definitely alter God's plan in that way. That was God's original plan. He said, I'm not too bad for me. Yeah, that is. That's scriptural from the gospel then. What Jesus did. Now there's a few more than two on this team. So now the team's intact. Here's a trivia question for you. All right, we know at this point, four members of the team. Paul, Silas, Timothy, and another guy's there. Who's that? Luke. Luke. Yeah. In, in verse 13, verse 16, the other place that he says we. He says we. So we know Luke was there with him as well. All right. So looking at uh, chapter 16, verse 4. As they went through the cities, they delivered them decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. This might be another uh, another little change of plan for Paul here. It is an interesting side note. What were the decrees that were ordained by the apostles at Jerusalem? Remember that the big thing that they were doing was not uh, circumcision is not necessary for a Gentile to become a believer in Christ. All right, that was a big thing. But what did he make Timothy do before they left? Circumcised. Not because he had to, though. Paul's not going against his own opinion there. You know, and that makes me wonder. I wonder if Paul ever planned to circumcise another Gentile. You know, when that was before this happened, I, I just wonder if Paul said, you know what? I'm glad we got that out of the way. I'll never have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, telling a Gentile he needs to be circumcised. And then he realized he needs to circumcise Timothy, not because of any legal aspect, but because that made him. Um, more likely to just avoid the whole contention when they went to Jewish people to start a mission in a new city. All right. They knew things would go smoother if he did. Uh, could be that both Paul and Timothy were, were willing to change plans there. But Timothy probably didn't plan on going through that stuff either for the benefit of God's plan. Well, so, yeah. Jew already, so yeah. That put the pressure on him to, to uh, be circumcised so that wouldn't have an effect on the ministry to the Jews. Yeah, yep. So that covers the personnel changes and then and then after that, the direction changes that they're going to go. And with that, the, uh, the mission really changes as well. So let's look at, at uh, verse 5 through, uh, through 7. Verse 5 says, And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. And just for a uh, I'm sure most of y'all know this. Somebody might be watching that don't establish there. Doesn't we, we use established as in started anew. They're still going to the churches they've already been to at this point. So the established means strengthened. They were they were going there and building up and strengthening in the faith. And those churches are their numbers were increasing. Now verse six says, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. And after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia. That's where they wanted to go. 
but the Spirit suffered them not. And there's something interesting from missing from, from those verses there. All right? It says the Holy Spirit, basically it says that he wouldn't let them go the rest of the way into Asia or Bithynia, but it doesn't say how. It doesn't say what the Spirit did to stop them. Why is it that the Bible doesn't always give us all the details of every story? Think about, I think a lot of times it's because we would only apply to that detail. You know, we, we would get tunnel vision a lot of times, I think, if we had all the, 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 the details when really the concept applies to a lot. Um, what I mean there is there's any number of ways that Paul and the crew could have been stopped, which they would realize as the work of the Spirit. It could have been as simple as the Holy Spirit communicating to Paul in his spirit, don't go that way. All right, could have been. Uh, if I had to guess, based on the way that Luke gives good details about happiness most of the time, I would think that's probably what happened. What I'm saying is the possibility that any number of things could have happened that they would have recognized, okay, the Spirit is putting a block here so we can't go that way. All right, but Luke gives good details, such as pointing out in verse nine about the vision in the night that, uh, that Paul had. I really don't know. Uh, my point is sometimes God uses circumstances to halt our plan, to make us change the right, make us change. You know, they wanted to go this way, but you can't now because of some kind of circumstance and you got to change. And that can just as much be God's work as God speaking into our heart and saying, you know, go a different direction. Um, but what do we usually do when circumstances block our plan? <laughs> we panic and try to fix the circumstances, right? It's <laughs> usually first option without considering that it may be the Holy Spirit changing the plan, you know? All right, let's look at verse uh, nine and 10. It says, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision immediately, we endeavored to go into Macedonia assuredly gathering that the Lord had called for us to preach the gospel unto them. Now they knew the revised mission. You know, I like how it's stated in verse 10, assuredly gathering. They, they were sure. They were gathering in all the information and now they were sure. Okay, I know this is where God wants us to go and this is what he wants to do. You know, a neat feeling uh, when you're sure that a plan comes right from God, when you get zeroed in on it and now the, the doubt has faded away and you know this is what God, that's, that's just a, that's a cool feeling to me you know, to, uh, to, to know that and you know what you're supposed to do. All the pieces are falling together and now it's finally time to put the rubber to the road and, and get moving. Um, it can be frustrating waiting on God's time to can. It, it can, we all know that. Waiting for the right people to come on board, hitting stops when you want to go. You know, that, that stuff uh, can, can get to us if we let it. Um, you know, and, and even when you're doing one thing, which may be a good thing, but you know you know there's more in store. You're just waiting for all that to uh, to get started. You know, so here. you know, this is where the gospel turned to Europe. Mm -hmm. And so from Europe, where did you pray? Here. <laughs> right. So this is actually the prayer that led eventually to Gospel coming to here. Uh -huh. This notion being able to be such a bright shining light. Amen. Out there for all these years. This is where it changed, right? Yeah. But the other way has been up in the, up in Turkey area and uh, up in the Black Sea and up in that area. Yeah. yeah. And not to say that the gospel never would have got here, right. but it's yeah. neat to look back and see that path. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that adds a little bit of encouragement right there when we see. I mean, I, I'm not saying that um, you know, one of our plans is going to change the world, but, you know, it might change somebody's world. We have heard the message on the cross. <laughs> Send the <laughs> All right. I don't know who said this. A wise person. Who said it first? Who knows? Somebody said the journey is as important as the destination, right? <laughs> so so they're... Uh, we see those steps starting to play out. God always has a reason for every part of the process that we go through. Good reasons, you know, reasons that, that make things happen according to his plan. 
uh, place us at the right time, at the right place to accomplish his will. Uh, and, and I'll say this on the chance that uh, as we begin to wrap this up, and, and the chance that this comes across somebody that, that doesn't know Christ as their Savior through this video or whatever, uh, his plan is for you to repent and be saved. That is God's plan. He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And he's already moved things around so that you would hear this right now. It's probably not the first time that you've ever heard it either. You know, so get with the plan. Follow Jesus. If you need help with that? Let us know. We'd be glad to help any time. As for Paul, you know, we won't go into, into these things tonight. We will in the future. The, the changes really don't stop there for Paul and, and, the, and the friends, do they? You know, they go into Macedonia looking for a man from a vision. What do they find there? Rather than a synagogue where they would usually go and, and find the Jewish men, they, they, they find uh, down by the riverside uh, just a few Jewish women to, uh, to start with, you know. And so that was a change, you know. And, and although it happened a good bit, you know, it's uh, Somebody, I, I was listening to a preacher and he said that, uh, that somebody said that when Paul went into a town, he would go first and see what the prison looked like so he'd stay where he was going to stay that night. You know, we don't know if that's actually true or not. That did happen, but he probably didn't plan to go there and get beat up and thrown in jail, you know, but that happened. Uh, and it worked out for good. And that's one of the things we will be talking about in the real soon future. All right, anybody got anything else to, uh, to add about the, uh, the beginning? The Bible, uh, Paul, Paul and Paul and Silas, right? There's no call. Yeah. John, Mark, and Matthew, we don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to hear it later on. Like everybody's been saying John Mark joined the crowd back. Yeah. God's playing this idea. Yeah. Well, we know Paul, what he got to do for the same time. Yeah. I think a lot of that due to Luke. Yeah, yeah, the writer was going with, with, with Paul. Uh, yep. Good point. Good stuff. All right, I enjoyed the lesson. I appreciate y'all. Let's uh, shut this down and we'll dismiss the prayer.